So quite often in your mobile application, you're going to want to display some information from a remote resource. So for example, it might be that you've got some weather information, you've got stocks and shares or football results or anything like that that you might want to display. So what we're going to do is today we're going to uh, use Flutterflow's um, API features to uh, pull in some information from a remote location. In this instance, it's going to be Superbase. We're going to create a table with inside Superbase and we're going to put some data in it and then we're going to serve it up via an API and then we're going to bring it into our Flutterflow application. So I hope you enjoy this one. Let's get started. So here we go then. So I'm on the homepage of superbase.com. You're going to need to get a free account. So just head over there and register. I've already got my account created. So I'm going to just progress with creating a new project. So on the homepage, I'm just going to hit start your project. This will take me to my Superbase homepage. I'm now going to create a new project by clicking on the new project button. And this is where I'm going to need to set some details up. So firstly, I'm going to set the name. So I'm going to just call this product shop. In the database password, I'm just going to let one get recommended to me. And then I'm going to choose my region. Now, I'm not in the US. I'm in. I'm actually in the EU. So I'm going to choose West EU. Um, and that's all I need to do. So I'm just ready now to create my project. That will just take a probably about a minute and a half for the project to be created. OK, so my Superbase project has now been created. Superbase is a really powerful platform. We're only using a very, very small part of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a table because we're going to need to hold our data. And once that data is then populated in our table, um, we're going to then um, have a look at the API. And we're going to show you um, just the URL that actually Superbase makes available for our Flutterflow application to hook onto to pull our products down. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the table Table editor and the first thing that we're going to have to do is create this table so we're going to hit the create new table option and we're going to give this table a name so I'm just going to call it products and then what we're going to do is we're then going to start creating some columns so the columns that we're going to need for this project is a title a category and a price we've already got some uh, columns that's already been set up for us an ID to uniquely identify the row um, and then we've got a created time stamp as well so we're going to keep those there we're just going to hit add column so the first one I'm going to add is a title and a title will be of type text. So I'm just going to scroll down here, choose text, hit add column. The next one I'm going to select is category. And again, that will also have a text data type because that's what we're going to be storing in there. And then finally, we're going to need a price. So a price will actually not be a text. It will be a float. So I'm just going to click float there and then I'm going to hit save. So it won't take too long um, the table will be created there it is so on the screen here this is the kind of the table editor view so I'm now going to start creating some data um, for my table so I'm going to hit insert here insert row and the first thing I'm going to do is set the title so let me just make this one up so uh, let's go for a waffle maker and let's say the category is a kitchen and then the price let's just say it's $34.99 I'm going to hit save just there the next step, I'm going to insert just another row because we always want more than a, we want about three rows in this example. So let's just put in here a running machine category is fitness. And then the price, let's say it's one hundred ninety nine. Hit save. And then we're going to choose one more row to go in there. So let's say this is going to be a television and let's put this into technology. I can spell technology, right? There it is. <laughs> technology. And then we're going to choose the price, which is going to be, say, £200. I think that is good. So we can hit save. So there we go. So we've now got our data in our table. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to make um, a little adjustment because when we created the table, one thing that we, did, we didn't do is we didn't allow this table to be accessed publicly over the, over the web um, to the API. We're going to need to make this publicly accessible. We don't want to worry too much about security in this particular sample project. So the way you do that is you head over to the authentication we then go down to uh, policies and what we want to do is we want to turn this off so we want to actually disable RLS so by just hitting disable and hit confirm there 
Uh, and then now our API will be public available so anybody can query this um, without any kind of security. Okay, so now that we've disabled the security, uh, let's head over to the API documentation and let's provide a little bit more detail about the API that we're gonna call. So just click over here to API docs. And on the left-hand side here, you see table and views. We've got one called products because that's the table that we've actually had created. So we're gonna click products. Of course, if you have more tables, you're gonna see them all listed there. I'm just going to now scroll down and I'm gonna show you this particular section that we're interested in here, which is read rows. I'm just gonna click on bash up there to provide a little bit more detail. I'm just gonna show you the, the key details that we need to capture. So here we go. So um, over here, you can see we've got the URL that we're going to call, which is this one that begins with HTTPS. This is the URL that's gonna actually return back our products into Flutterflow. And then we've also got what's uh, called an API key. We're also gonna to need to set that up with inside Flutterflow as a header um, in order for us to be able to publicly access that API in the first place. So they're just the two bits that we need. Um, and um, um, we'll come back here in a second and we'll copy and paste that into Flutterflow. So let's move over fl to Flutterflow right now. So we're now in Flutterflow and we're now gonna create our project. So let's hit the create new button and we're just gonna call this one products shop and we're gonna hit on create new. We're just gonna have a completely simple um, application here. We're just going to ignore any kind of additional setup. We're just gonna hit start building. So here we are, we're back on the UI builder. So now we're gonna start creating our user interface. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to put a list view into the center of our application. So let's just move the list view into view there. So we're just gonna drag and drop that in. The next bit that we're gonna do is we're gonna start preparing ourselves for our UI elements. We're gonna need a title, we're gonna need a category, and we're gonna need a price. So what we're gonna do is instead of creating it by hand, we're gonna use a Flutterflow template. So I'm just gonna click on the templates option down here. Now I do know that we have one down here called user list two, which should fit us perfectly we have the, the 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 title there and then we have also a space for the category and the price so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to want to configure our list view to make that api call we're going to want to start um, capturing the products um, that's going to be returned and then we're going to want to display them on screen so what we're going to do is we're going to hit on the uh, the widget tree we're going to click on list view so that just will select our list view uh, component and then we're going to choose a backend query from up here we're going to choose add backend query we're just going to choose API call because that's exactly what we're doing and we're going to use the products API which is what we defined earlier with inside the API section hit confirm what we now need to do is we now to need to do one extra thing we now need to generate the children so the children will be each product of our products we have three our product will be just one of them and you'll see how this is used in a moment so we're just going to choose a product as a variable name. What we also need to do is we need to actually um, set this now. We need to actually set the variable to the values that's coming back from our response. So what we've got here, we've got product response, which is our API response. And we're gonna want to here choose a dollar symbol, which means the root of the product response, hit confirm. Um, and then as soon as I hit confirm, what will happen is, is the list view in the middle will then show a representation of multiple items. That, that should mean that we're heading in the right direction. Hit confirm say okay to that and there we go so it's not actually making the api call yet this is just flutterflow um, kind of giving you some indication that this is going to contain multiple items from the configuration of the back end query so what we now need to do is we now need to set our titles um, and our category and our price so let's just choose the first um the, the first piece of text there on the right hand side here we're going to say set from variable and if you remember we set the product up as a variable so you can see here it's now a product item so if i choose product item what i'm going to do is i'm then going to select json path and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a full stop and i'm going to say title that's all that we need to do we're also going to do the same thing here for um for secondary text we're just going to set the category now we're going to say product item we're going to say json path and we're going to say category hit confirm and then finally we're just going to do the same for the price set the variable from the product item there it is and we're just going to go to json path and then we're going to choose price and hit confirm right that's pretty well much it that's our ui now configured um, what we should now see is that when we run this up in test mode we then should see all of our products 
get displayed. So before we do that, let's just try to make a little bit more feature complete by putting a title in of products shop. And then we should now be ready to hit the test mode. So let's do that now and we'll be right back to see a preview of the application. Okay, so there we are. We have the application up and running. It's got our title of product shop and we're seeing the three products from our API request. Now, just by way of test, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna add another product into the super base just to make sure that it, nothing is uh, being cached or anything like that. So let's choose products table, let's insert, let's insert row. And in this one, we're gonna say uh, motor oil. Um, the category is gonna be um, vehicle and the price is gonna be say 4.99, hit save. So there we go, we've got an additional row there. Let's head back to our test mode. Let's do an instant reload. And by magic, we should see that fourth item in our list. So there you have it. We now have an additional item there into the product shop. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This has been a good little introduction into the use of an API with inside Flutterflow. Of course, we use Superbase in this example, but you could use any API out there on the web that you've got access to. For example, you might have a weather feed and you wanted to bring some weather details into your mobile application. Um, but this is just one example. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, there's going to be more videos from where this has come from. Please do like and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be releasing content every week. Um, and hopefully you're going to find something useful there that you're going to be able to work into your, your own sort of mobile application development so please do like and subscribe please do put some comments um, in the chat for us i'll do my best to come back to you and we look forward to seeing you in the next video thank you thanks very much